Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 5 of our understanding the ABC of Docker. And in this video, we're talking about pulling and working with containers from Docker Hub. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 3 and 4 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. Pulling the container from the Docker Hub. Finally, with some of the commands that we discussed in our previous video, we are now going to start working with the real container. So for doing that, we are going to connect with the hub.docker.com via the PowerShell. You know what, actually you don't really have to go to the hub.docker.com in your browser and then you have to download those containers. Because your Docker command that we saw in our previous video has all the features to pull the containers and to push the containers and get the latest container out from the Docker art hub.docker.com and do all those kind of stuff. So we are going to make use of it. So in this demonstration, we will be working with following containers. One is the hello world container and another one is the Ubuntu container. So we are going to see the two versions of working with the containers or pulling the containers. One is using the kitematic and another one is using the command prompt or maybe the PowerShell command. So we'll use both of these word. So Let's quickly see the command one first and we'll see how easy it is even with the command and then we'll see the most easiest one which is nothing but the kitematics. It is much easier because you do everything from the UI. First we'll see the command one because it's commandy thing but once it comes to UI you know what it is. Alright so for that I'm gonna flip to PowerShell. So let's open the PowerShell and now let's quickly see the images that I got. So remember in our previous video we were talking about something called docker and images and if I hit enter you can see that we already have a Ubuntu image installed in my machine and it is created 10 days before. So I'll first uninstall this Ubuntu image from my docker container so that we will do a fresh installation of Ubuntu. So what I'm going to do I will first of all try to stop the already running Ubuntu container in my docker. So let's quickly see what is this. Alright, so it seems like we already have a Ubuntu image running. It's There are so many instances already running in my machine and even there is something called uh, something just running for two hours before. So if I try to remove this sometimes it won't allow you. So let's see if I run this you can see that it will not allow you to remove saying unable to remove the repository reference Ubuntu because the container is currently running. So what we have to do is we have to first stop the container. So remember for stopping a container or removing a running process or removing the container itself we have all these commands already available right here. So if I just go to the docker help you can see for stopping a container there is something called stop and for removing a container then you use rm and removing the image you use the rmi so these are the three commands which i'm currently using right so as you can see before creating an actual container itself i'm showing you how to remove it how to stop it and how to remove the images all those stuff right so it's kind of like vice versa instead of doing it by installing and then removing it i'm showing it from removing it to installing it so don't worry about it it's still the same thing so let's quickly stop the already running container so for that to check all the process remember in our previous video we're talking about something like docker ps hyphen a to show all the uh, running processes and you can see we just go with the small command this time something like docker stop paste this container ID and hit enter you can see that that particular process is stopped so now if I do again PSA you can see that it has already stopped but it has not been removed from that particular uh, running execution so if I just do RM and now if I do A you can see that the particular container is not available so you have to first stop and then you have to remove that particular container so again let's do this docker and then rm and there we go now let's quickly see right so it is also safer side that you stop it and then remove it sometimes it also show you an error that it has not stopped yet so you cannot just remove the containers directly like this what I'm doing right now so I'll quickly remove all of them 
All right, seems like everything is removed. Now if I see all the process running, there is no Ubuntu uh, running here. So now what I can do is I can easily uh, remove that particular image from my machine, which is nothing but the Ubuntu, right? There we go. And you can see that it has untagged the latest uh, Ubuntu from my, from my Docker. And then it is also removing that particular container from my Docker, right? And now if I see the Docker images, you can see that I don't have the Ubuntu available in my machine, right? So how to install this particular Ubuntu in my machine? It's very, very simple. All you have to do is just do a Docker. You can either use pull or you can use docker run Ubuntu. If you just do something like this, you can see that it is finding for the local image in your machine. Since the local image is not available in your machine, it will try to download the Ubuntu from the hub.docker.com. And you can see that it is currently downloading the 49.33 MB of the image, just 49.33 MB of an image. The reason is because in our Hyper-V, we already have the kernel and most of the files required for the Linux is already available. So you don't really have to have the full image to be downloaded, just 49 MB is fine. So after downloading this, I will show you the size of the particular Ubuntu. It will be more than 50 MB, right? So I will be back once the downloading is done. All right, so it has downloaded the latest image of Ubuntu in our Docker. And now if I see the Docker images, you can see that we have the image and you can see that it has downloaded the 124 MB of the Ubuntu in my machine, but it was actually downloading only 50 MB, but now it is showing like 124 MB, right? And the reason is because the supporting files for the Ubuntu is already available in my image in Hyper-V and that's why it is just showing 124 MB. That's the actual size of the particular container. It's not necessary that it should download everything again and again. If it already have those files in our Hyper-V of the Docker, then it again won't download the same thing. That is the power of the container itself, right? That's the most interesting stuff of the container in Docker's. 